Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video series, we're going to learn how to create our first song or our first MIDI song in Reaper. So in this series of videos, we're going to create a song with our MIDI keyboard. We're not going to be recording any live instruments in this series. We'll get to that at a later time. Now, the way I'm approaching this series is that you don't have to know anything about using Reaper. You could have just downloaded it from the website and opened it for the first time. So together, we'll create your first song. And don't get too caught up if you don't like the song we're going to create. I created this one very specifically to show you all the different things we can do in Reaper. Obviously, your next song could be something you prefer. But if you follow along, as I do this, you will learn how to create just about anything you want. But before we get started, there's a few things I should show you. First, I'm not going to assume you know anything about how Reaper works. So I will be teaching you everything along the way as it comes up. But if you do want to dig deeper on any particular subject, go to the Reaper website and you'll find tons of videos on any particular subject, all labeled and categorized so you can find what you're looking for. So after you download Reaper and you open it up, it should look like this. Except down over here, this is my MIDI keyboard. You're not going to have that. I just have this on screen. So when I play it, you can see that I'm playing the keyboard and what notes I'm actually hitting. But everything up here should look the same on your copy of Reaper. Now we should make sure a few things work. If we go to our preferences under options, Right down here, Preferences. We should go over here on the Audio Device and make sure your audio device is chosen. Right over here. This is the audio device that's wired to your computer, which is wired to your speakers. So you can hear the output of everything we're doing. And you should also check MIDI Devices. Your MIDI device or USB keyboard should show up over here. If the drivers were installed correctly, and make sure it's chosen and enabled. If it's not, just right click it and enable the input. This way your MIDI keyboard or USB keyboard will work with Reaper. Now there's a few other things you might want to change to match the way I'm using Reaper. If I go over here and double click to create new tracks, let's create a few. The way these tracks look is based on a layout. I have mine set up under Options, Layouts, Track Panel, and set to Large. If you want to match mine, just set yours the same way. And also, if we go to the Mixer, under View, go to Mixer, which looks like this. I have the layout set up for my Mixer under Options, Layouts, Mixer Panel, to session mixer. Again, if you want your screen to look the same, make sure you choose this first. So the mixer channels will look like this. Also, to make this easier, I'm going to put the mixer on the left side of the track control panel. So I'm going to right click over here, dock mixer in docker. If this is already selected, you can just leave it. And grab this tab right here and put it to the left side. So here it turns gray, and then close this so we only see one channel right here. So if I choose this channel, I see this one, or if I choose this one, the mixer switches. We can see that better if I move my fader from this one to this one, and back and forth. This will make it easier to adjust the level on each track as we select it. So we create new tracks over here, we can adjust the volume over here. We can do it over here as well, but it's a bit easier to see over here. So I'd suggest setting this up the same on your end. But for now, let's hide the mixer. And let's delete these tracks, because it's very easy to create new tracks by double clicking. But I'm going to show you a different way that works better for MIDI. Now, before we get started, I want you to install some third party plugins. 
because Reaper does come with a few, there's a drum machine and a pretty good synth, but for this song, we need a bit more. I want a piano and a more varied synthesizer plugin, so we're going to download these separately and install them on our computer. So if we go to the internet and we're going to search Piano One, then we'll choose this website, Sound Magic Piano One, which takes us here. Then we can download the install we need for Windows or for Mac, and that's going to give us a free piano plugin to use for our song. Then we're also going to search TAL plugins. Then we'll go to this website, choose products, and we're going to download right down over here on the free products, TAL Noisemaker. And again, we'll install it for either PC or Mac. And when both of those are installed, we're going to quit Reaper and then open it back up again so that it'll see our newly installed plugins. So now we can create a track with a piano on it. So again, instead of adding tracks over here by double clicking them, we'll go to the track menu and choose insert virtual instrument on new track. And that's going to save us a few steps because it's going to create a new track with an instrument already on it. So we'll go here under instruments and look for those plugins. We're going to choose piano one, which is the piano we just downloaded. Again, if you don't see this, make sure you quit Reaper after you install it and then reopen it. This way Reaper sees it. So we'll double click this one and that's going to create a track right over here with the piano already on it. The track's already in to record right here. Monitoring is turned on, so we should hear the piano if we play our MIDI keyboard. And we do. So now we're ready to record our first part. But let's first go down over here to our tempo and change it to 85. We'll double click this, type 85, and that changed the tempo in this project to 85 beats per minute. So if we go over here to a metronome and turn it on, hit play, we hear a metronome and it's playing at 85 beats per minute. So we're ready to start recording our piano. So the first part I want to put down is a melody piano and it's going to sound something like this. And then it repeats. So we can close the plugin. We don't need it open for now. And we're going to record and record this part. Now I'm going to give it two bars of intro and I'm going to start playing on bar three. Now we can go into record by going to the transport button right down here and hitting it. Or I can use the keystroke Control R on the PC or Command R on the Mac, which I find quicker. So let's record this part. And because the metronome is already turned on, we can play to that click track. Now it's a bit sloppy, so if we double click it, we can edit the part. Right down here, we can see our notes, and you could use your mouse wheel or trackpad to zoom in. This way, we'll make it bigger by holding out a modifier. We can make that a bit smaller though. So here's the part. Once again, it's pretty sloppy. We don't need this piece right here because it's gonna loop. So let's select it and delete it. And let's quantize this so the performance is a lot better. We'll go up here to quantize, but before we do that, let's change our grid right down here to be 16th notes, because I'm pretty sure I'm playing 16th notes in the performance. So I'm going to change it right here, change the grid. So now if we go to quantize it with this button, it's going to quantize to those 16th notes, because it's set up to use our grid right here. It's going to do all notes, and it's going to do position, note, and end. So it's going to quantize the beginning of the notes and the end of them. 
Before it looked like this, and after it looks like this. Let's hit okay, and let's hear it. This last note could be a bit longer, so I'm gonna grab the right side of it and trim it out like this. And notice it snaps to our grid because I have snapping right here turned on. If this was off, it would move freely. But I want it to snap and be perfect, so leave this on and trim it out to the right. So now let's close the MIDI editor right here and let's trim our MIDI item right here. This container is called a MIDI item. So I'll go to the left side of it. My cursor changes to a trim tool and I'll move this over right to bar three. Notice it's not snapping. So I'll turn on snapping here. So it snaps right on bar three. And we'll do the same thing on the right side. So it snaps at bar five. It's not the perfect length. Perfect. So now we're gonna right click on the item. I'm gonna go down here to glue items. That's gonna create a whole new item that's exactly two bars long, from bar three to bar five. So now, if I trim this out, it's gonna loop. So now it's gonna play the same thing twice. And we can see that it's looped because the little notch right here showing this is a loop point. This is the first piece and it loops right here. So let's trim it out a whole bunch. That should be enough. And now it's gonna loop every two bars. And if we change anything on the first two bars, it's gonna change the loop going forward. Perfect. Now let's record another part. This time we're gonna record piano chords. So let's select this track, right click it, and duplicate it. That's gonna duplicate the track with a piano on both with the same performance, which we don't really want. So let's double click this track, which is gonna select this item and then delete it. We'll take the first track out of record. Now we can record chords on this track, which is gonna go along with a piano melody. In fact, let's name this one Piano Melody and Piano Chords. Now the chords we're gonna play are like this. An A minor chord, which has an A in the bass, A octave, and then a C, which is the upper third, and then an E which is the upper fifth. So play it all together. It sounds like that. And then I'm gonna work down the keyboard to a G chord, then an F chord, and back to the G chord. Very simple. And it's all gonna be whole notes. So I'll start from bar two to give me one bar of count in, and I'll record it on this track. That should be good enough. Now I'll double click this item and it looks like this. And let's quantize this so each one of them is perfect. We'll change the grid to be whole notes right here. So it's gonna quantize the whole notes because that's all I played. Hit the quantize button. And once again, it quantizes to the grid, all notes, position, note and end. So it quantizes the beginning and the end before and after. Hit OK, close the editor. Let's trim it right to bar three, to bar seven. We'll glue it to create a new item and we'll trim it out or we'll loop it from the right side, right to about there. So let's hear this back.
perfect. It's starting to sound like a song. Now let's duplicate this part, the chords, but let's change the sound for the duplicate. So right click it, duplicate tracks. Let's make this smaller by hitting the page down button. Page up makes them bigger and page down makes them smaller. So on the second track here, the duplicate, let's change the sound. So instead of being a piano, let's remove it. Let's choose the other sound that we downloaded. If we scroll down here in instruments, we'll see the TAL Noisemaker plugin. Let's choose that. And let's change the preset to be a pad. If we scroll down to the pads, there's a good one right down here called Bionic Pad. We'll choose that. Now we can blend this sound in with the piano chords. Let's turn off the metronome. Let's hear it. But before we do that, let's go back to the mixer right here. Like I showed you before, we can control the volume of each of them just by selecting them. So let's start with the pad a lot lower. That feels pretty good. The pad is much more subtle than the piano. Let's turn off the melody and just hear the chords together. pretty good. So before we move on, we should save this. Let's go to the file menu right here. Save as. Make sure we select these two checkpoints right here. Create a subdirectory for the project and copy all media items into that project. This will keep all our files together. So we'll give it a name like new song. Save it. Now this whole track is now saved. So in the next video, we're gonna start programming some drums. So let's move on to that video.